Okay, so in this lecture we will look at another way of arriving at the diffusion equation. So we will uh, look at what a random walk is and then from this sort of microscopic picture we will see how we can also go towards uh, to the diffusion equation by going from a discrete model to a continuous version of the discrete model. Okay, so the random walk problem is the following. So there is this random walker who is conf confined for simplicity to the x-axis. You can have you know higher dimensional versions of this problem. So you know for after every unit of time he moves either to the right or to the left. So with probability p he moves to the right and with probability q he moves to the left and so there is no uh, you know chance for him to just stay at that point. You know I, at every instant of time he does one of these two actions and there is a certain unit distance that he takes, right. So after n units of time, so the question is how far away from the origin has the random walker managed to go typically, right. So this is, you know, the type of question which is addressed in this class of problems, right. So, so in general you can ask, you know, what is the probability that after n steps that the, uh, what is the probability that the random walker is at a particular position r, right. So this question can be asked and in fact there is an analytical way to answer this question. So let us call this probability, um, you know, Pn of m. So the probability that the walker is at the coordinate m after taking capital N steps. So if we define n1 to be the number of steps taken to the right and n2 to be the number of steps taken to the left, so then we clearly have the total number of steps is just n1 plus n2. And, uh, you know, the position of this person is simply given by n1 minus n2. Right, so n1 to the right and n1 steps to the left. So he is going to be at the point m is equal to n1 minus n2. So suppose uh, you know the, so there is no memory for this random walker, right? So this is what is called a you know a Markov protocol, which is that at any, every instant of time, uh, regardless of what the you know history of this trajectory of this walker is, is going to go to the right with probability p and to the left with probability q and nothing else. There is no dependence on the history. So if this happens then it is a fairly straightforward problem to solve. So the number of ways in which you know n steps can be composed of n1 right steps and n2 right steps is clearly just n choose capital N choose n1 and for each of these possibilities the probability is given by p to the n n1 times q to the n2 right. Each of these steps is an independent step. So you have taken n1 steps to the right, so you get p to the n1 and then you have to multiply with q to the n2. So there, therefore the overall probability of finding the, the walker at the position m after n steps is given by n choose n1 times p to the n1 times q to the n2. But we can work out this n1 and n2 in terms of capital N and small m. So it is clear that you know just from these equations n1 is simply given by capital N plus m divided by 2 and n2 is given by capital N minus m by the whole thing divided by 2. So we can rewrite this probability distribution, uh, you know, Pn of m as just n factorial divided by n plus m by 2 the whole factorial times n minus m by 2 the whole factorial times p to the n plus m by 2 times q to the n minus m by 2. So clearly, you know, both n and m have the same parity, right. So if uh, uh, so if, uh, if the total number of steps taken n is even, so the person is going to be at an even location and if the total number of steps taken is odd, then for your, it is guaranteed that he is going to be at an odd location, right. So therefore, you know, this is a going to be an integer, this is going to be an integer, so there are no difficulties with evaluating factorials and so on, okay. So, we can take a step back and see if we can write down a difference equation, right. We have already worked out the solution to this problem, the discrete version of this problem, but it is instructive to be able to write down the difference equation to which this is a solution, right. So, so the idea is that the probability that this walker is going to be at the position m after n steps is the same as saying that, you know, he, how did he arrive at this position m, right? He must have either got to m from m minus 1 or from m plus 1. So the penultimate location of this uh, walker must be one of these two. Now, if he has arrived at n starting from m minus 1, so then 
there is this probability p with which you could have uh, moved to the right from m minus 1. So, p n of m must be equal to p times p n minus 1 of m minus 1 or the other one other possibility is that he was initially uh, one step earlier at m plus 1 and then he moved left. So, then you have plus q times p n minus 1 of m plus 1. So, this is the difference equation of the random walker. Now, we will see that if you take this difference equation and then make this you know continuous right. So, this is a discrete time discrete in space, but if you make it continuous in both of these uh, dimensions. So, then we are going to actually get a partial differential equation which we will see is a familiar PDE. So, let us do this let us carry out this exercise. In order to do this first of all let us say that it is an unbiased random walker. So, p equal to q equal to half. So, with probability half is going to go to the right and with probability half is going to go to the left. So, now let us bring in a unit time step right. So, to be tau and a unit spatial distance. So, we are on a lattice whose lattice constant is a and so, the difference equation now can be written in this form. So, p of after n times tau. So, if you take n steps the time that has elapsed is n times tau and the, the position that the random walker is is at is m times a the distance covered. Now, this is equal to half of p n minus 1 uh, tau of m m or uh, m minus 1 times a plus half p n minus 1 or uh, tau this is the time and the, the location is m plus 1 a right. So, now we just rearrange this you know subtract the left hand side with p n minus 1 of times tau of m m m times a divided by tau right. So, if you do this and then the right hand side you see can be written this very nice convenient form. Uh, you observe that the left hand side uh, you know there is m of m a. So, the location is the same on the left hand side. So, it is only n tau and n minus 1 tau on the left hand side and on the right hand side you see that the time at which you know this is being looked at is all all these times are the same whereas it is the locations that are changing m minus 1 times a then there is m a and then m plus 1 a on the right hand side. And so, we are going to take this you know take these dual limits. So, we are make, going to make these uh, time steps arbitrarily small and the number of steps taken to get to uh, you know this position uh, m a the number of steps n will be made arbitrarily large such that n times tau must tend to a continuous variable. So, although n is very large and tau is very small n times tau is going to give you a, a finite continuous variable t and also a is going to be made arbitrarily small. So, m has to become very large so that m a itself tends to this continuous variable spatial variable x and while simultaneously ensuring that this a squared by 2 tau is also a finite quantity and we will identify this with the symbol d. Right. So, if we carry out this limiting procedure, so we observe that you know the left hand side is really a discrete derivative right with respect to time right. So, it is n tau then n minus 1 tau and then you are taking this tau going to 0 limit. So, the left hand side actually becomes uh, a time derivative a partial time derivative and the right hand side is actually a second order derivative spatial derivative right. So, you have this a squared sitting here. So, you can see that. So, there is this forward difference and backward difference and then you do it two times over you can convince yourself or look up some you know elementary textbook where on uh, how to take a, a derivative and write it as a, um, a discrete version of a derivative is exactly just this right and uh, uh, taken two times. Uh, so, that is should be identified as the second order spatial derivative of this function t. But there is also one more ingredient we have to put in which is that it is convenient to work with uh, you know probability densities instead of these are these are probabilities when you are working in um, you know discrete space and time. But then you ask you know what is the, the probability uh, density or, uh, associated with being at a, at, at a certain point. And so, the probability itself will come by considering some uh, 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 small spatial uh, uh, region dx 
and then you multiply it and that would give you the probability right so if you look at if you change this to a probability density and then identify the left hand side as a partial derivative with respect to uh, time and the right hand side as a second order partial derivative with respect to space so you immediately get the diffusion equation right so this is a third way of arriving at the diffusion equation and so we will uh, you know solve this differential equation the the, the pde in uh, in a future lecture but let's quickly make a plot of the difference equation itself right so we have an exact solution available to us so let's plot this and see what it looks like so i have a plot of this function which is a binomial distribution really and so if you take capital n to be relatively small it looks something like this so this is a distribution of you know finding your uh, you know pn of m so uh, as you make n larger and larger you see that this becomes takes a form which is actually a familiar form so there is a um, you know so there is this mean associated with uh, you know this distribution and then there is a variance associated with it right and there is the shape is a familiar Gaussian. So one thing that turns out to be typical in these kinds of diffusion equation problems is is that you know if the random walker takes n steps, so the typical position that the, the random walker finds himself in is of the order of square root n. Right? So although this is sort of a very generic aspect of you know the motion uh, diffusive motion. Right? So we will see that. So this is uh, is borne out in higher dimensions in other kinds of problems. Very general, remarkable generality associated with this feature is that if you take n steps, so the typical distance covered is of the order of square root n. So it's useful to just look at this plot for now, but we will obtain this solution. It looks like a Gaussian, and then we will see that when we solve the partial differential equation directly, this too will give us you know something which uh, a Gaussian solution provided I mean, you have to supply the initial conditions, boundary conditions and so on those are more details but for now we see that even the, uh, the discrete version is already pointing towards a, a Gaussian kind of a solution which we will work out you know, in a more thorough way starting from the PDE itself. Okay, thank you.